Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number four from the Statistics S1 January 2022 International A Level and Excel paper. Question here is about discrete random variables. It says the random variable W has a discrete uniform distribution where the probability that W is equal to particular value of W, 1, 2, 3, 4, or 5, are all one fifth. So the probability that uh, w is equal to 1 is 1 fifth and 2 is 1 fifth and 3 is 1 fifth and so on. The uniform distribution, we want to find the probability that w is between 2 and 3.5. Now this is uniform, discrete uniform distribution, uh, distribution so it's discrete, so 3.5 has no meaning. So the probability that, b, that, the, that, that the 2 is between, or w is between 2 and 3.5 includes the probability that it's 2 and 3 basically. So the probability of this is the probability that W is equal to 2 plus the probability that W is equal to 3 is 1 fifth plus another 1 fifth, which is 2 fifths. Simple as that. So the probability that W is between 2 and 3.5 is equal to 2 fifths. And that's the answer to question part, question part A. Then it says the discrete random variable X is equal to 5 minus 2w, find ex. So e, the expected value of x, is the same as the expected value of 5 minus 2w. Okay. Now, when you have something like this, this is basically the expected value of something is like the mean of that thing. And here we have some sort of coding on the mean. Basically, this is, you can understand it as some sort of coding on the mean, where the mean value has been multiplied by minus 2, and then 5 has been added to it. Now, when you multiply all the values in a set of data by a number, it changes the mean of that set of values. And if you add something to every data set, it also changes, it has an effect also on the, the mean. So if you take each value and you multiply them by minus 2 and you add 5 to them, it will be the same effect as taking the mean value, which is... EW, multiplying it by negative 2 and adding 5 to it will have exactly the same effect. All right, so doing this to each of the data entries would be the same as multiplying the mean, the expected value of W, by negative 2 and adding 5 to it. So we know the expected val value of W is what now? What is the expected value of W? Now, the expected value of W is basically the mean of, these, uh, of this probability distribution. Okay, and because the probability distribution is is uniform, all of them are one fifth. The pro if I was to draw a, a distribution a table, the, each of these would have a probability of one fifth, one fifth, one fifth, one fifth. Okay, so basically the middle value, which is three, would be the expected value of W. Okay, because um, when you have a uniform distribution, the expected value is going to be the number of entries plus one divided by two, the middle value basically. So that's going to be three here, that's the one in the middle. If we were to find the expected value of W by multiplying these together and then adding them together, we would find that the answer is going to be come, out, come out as three. And I can show you that, it's one fifth, plus two fifths, plus three fifths, plus four fifths, plus five fifths. That gives you all together, that's five, six, 10, 15 over five which is equal to 3. So the expected value is 3. So for EX, which is E5 minus 2W, it's minus 2 times the expected value of W, which is 3, plus 5, which is minus 6, plus 5, which is equal to 1. So we can say that EX is equal to so minus 1, negative 1. There's the answer for part B. Okay, so that's the expected value of x okay which is 5 e time e of 5 minus 2 w which is minus 2 times expected value of w plus 5 okay so and as i mentioned with a with a uniform distribution like this discrete uniform distribution the expected value is always the number in the middle okay if they're all the same probabilities all right now for the probability that x is less than w. The probability that x is less than w. Now, we know that x is equal to 5 minus w. 5 minus 2w. So if I just try to put this in terms of w, what this means is 
um, x, which is 5 minus 2w, is less than um, w. Okay? Is less than w. x is less than w. x is less than w. So I replace the x with 5 minus 2w. So I can rearrange this. I've got 5 is less than 3w. So 5 is less... No, sorry, 5. So 5 over 3 is less than w. Therefore, I can say w is greater than 5 over 3. So we've got to find the probability that w is greater than 5 over 3, which is 1 and 1 third, okay, which is the same as, basically, if we look at this, it's going to be the probability that w is greater than 2, greater than or equal to 2. Okay, same as this, which is equal to, you've got basically greater than or equal to 2, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 4 out of 5. It's going to be, um, you know, 4 times 1 fifth, which is 4 over 5. So the probability that x is less than w is equal to 4 fifth. That's the answer to this next part of the question, part C. And now we've got to go to part D. Part D says the discrete random variable y equals 1 over w. We have this probability distribution for w. Find the probability distribution of y. So we want to find this is the y value. This is the probability that the y is equal to y. This is the, the probability that of each of these being uh, the probability that, um, you know, the random variable is equal to that particular value. So the y values are 1 over w. So when w is equal to 1, you're going to have um, 1. 1 over 1 is 1. When w is equal to 2, you're going to have a half. When w is equal to 3, y is going to be 1 over 3. When w is equal to 4, it should be 1 over 4. When w is equal to 5, then y is going to be 1 over 5. And the probabilities of these are all the same. It's a uniform distribution. 1 -fifth, 1 -fifth, and 1 fifth, 1 and 1 fifth. Okay, so this is the probability distribution of y. That's d part 1. Now d part 2 says find the variance of y. Now the variance of y, so we know the variance is basically the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean. So that means basically e y squared minus e y all squared. So we've got to find these two things. So e y squared is going to be when you take the y values and square them, that's one, a quarter, one ninth, one sixteenth, and one over twenty-five. Okay, so let's find e y first. Let's find what e y is first. The expected value of y, okay is going to be, well, it's going to be, um, if they're all the same, it's going to be one-third, isn't it? Expected value of y is going to be one-third. Okay, it says show the variance of y showing all the expected value of y is going to be one-third because that's um, actually n equals one, two, three, four, five. Um, I don't think it's going to be one-third. That's going to be one-third when the, these are numbers, integers going in order. Okay, so I don't think it should be one third here. So let's just calculate and see. I'm not sure here, but because it's uniform distribution, it's normally the middle value, but that's when you have the numbers going in order, like one to something in integers. So I don't think it's going to be one third. Let's just see what happens when we find EY. EY is when you multiply these together. So you have one times one fifth plus a half times one fifth plus a third times one fifth plus a quarter times one fifth plus one fifth times one fifth. Okay, so let's put this in the calculator and see what we get. So we're gonna just stick this in the calculator and see what happens. That's a fifth times a fifth. I'll put it here so I can fit everything in. So I have one fifth. plus a half times a fifth. Okay, plus a third times a fifth. Plus a quarter times a fifth. Plus 
plus a fifth times a fifth. Whoops. A fifth times one fifth. Okay. That gives us 137 over 300. So I was right, it's not going to be the same as that middle value. That only true when you have like one, two, three, four, five integers in a row, um, one after the other. Okay, so this is EY. Now we've got to find EY squared. EY squared. Um, sorry. The expected value of the squares, the mean of the squares. So this is EY squared. So this is when we're going to take these numbers and multiply them. So it's 1 times a fifth again, which is 1 times 1 fifth, plus this will be a quarter times 1 fifth, plus 1 ninth times 1 fifth, plus 1 over 16 times 1 fifth, plus 1 over 25 times 1 fifth. So let's see what that gives us. Okay. So basically what I need to do is just change all of these. This is going to be 1 over 1 over 25. That's 1 over 25 times a fifth. And that will be 1 over 16. That's 1 over 16 times 1 fifth. This will become 1 over 9 times 1 fifth. This will be 1 over 4 times 1 fifth, and we start, that's 1 fifth, yeah, that's fine. That equals 5269 over 18,000. 5269 over 18,000. Okay, so that's EY squared, so let me make some more space. I need more space for this. So we can say that the, the variance of Y is going to be e y squared minus e y all squared the square of the mean minus the mean of the squares minus the square of the mean so it's five two six nine over eighteen thousand minus one three seven over three hundred but squared so you have this answer minus i'll put in brackets 137 over 300 and that squared and that will be the variance which is 947 over 11,250 947 over 11,250 let me write the answer to well they didn't show tell us how to, to round it let me just round it to 3 itself that gives me 0 0.0842 0 0.0842 Okay, there's the answer for the variance of y. That's part, it says show your working. So we showed all the working there. And then it says variance of 2 minus 3y. Now the variance is something which is like a measure of spread. It's to do with the, it's, it's to do with the measure of spread. And if you have this kind of coding in variance, if you take each data entry and you multiply it by a certain number and you add something to the number, well, if you have some data sets, a data sets of uh, say you have numbers one, two, three, and four, and you were to add one, two, or you know add two, for example, to each of them, then this is going to become three, five. It's going to become if you add two, sorry, that's going to be three, four, five, and six, and seven. Okay, so the spread of the data is still the same, it's still four apart from each other. From the from, you know each data entry is still the same distance apart from each other. Okay, so. The adding something didn't change the spread. So the adding something doesn't change the variance. But if I multiply each data entry by a certain number, then it will increase the distance between them or decrease the distance between them depending what you multiply by. So if I multiply every data set by minus 3, that's going to become minus 3, and that will be minus 6 and minus 9 and minus 12. So the distance between the data entries has increased. The range has changed. Okay, so multiplying affects the variance but adding and subtracting doesn't accept, affect the variance. So the variance is like the square of the standard deviation. So multiplying by three it changes the standard deviation, okay? And it changes the variance by being the square 
of the change in the in the standard deviation. So when you got the variance of something like this, you ignore the thing that's being added to it, and you take what's being multiplied by it, the, each of the data entries, and you square that, and that will be the same as you know uh, the variance of y times whatever was multiplied by the the entries squared. So minus three squared times the variance of y, which is nine times the variance of y, which is nine times nine four seven over one one two five zero. Okay, so I'm going to take this value and I'm going to multiply it by nine. And that gives me nine four seven over one thousand two hundred and fifty. over 1250 which is equal to 3SF 0 0.7576 that's actually an exact value so I can leave it like that so that's a variance of 2 minus 3Y and there's the end of that question part E so that question is all about discrete random variables um, okay so there's the answer for part D and part E thank you for watching other questions about or from this paper, January 2022 S1 can be found in the playlist over here that should appear in this section here. The link for the, this topic of discrete random variables from S1 can be found in the link that should appear in this area. You can subscribe to my channel by clicking on the link in the middle here. Thank you for watching and see you soon.